Now we're going to talk about the structure of the sun and we'll start off by drawing a nice diagram here that we can refer to as we talk about the different parts of the sun. So make a big circle here and that will obviously be the sun and then let's put some smaller circles inside it to depict the layers of the sun internally. The center of the sun here we call this part the core and that's where most of the fusion takes place and where most of the heat is generated and then these layers out beyond the core this layer we call the radiative zone and heat transfer takes place there by radiation and out here we have the convective zone And then near what we would think of as the surface of the sun, we have what we call, and I'll just draw these as, as thin layers, we have the photosphere right there, and that's what you typically think of as the surface of the sun. Even though it doesn't have a hard surface like a planet does, that's the photosphere. And then on top of the photosphere is this thin layer, which is called the chromosphere. And then beyond that we have what's called the corona and when you think of a p typical picture of the sun drawn and you think of these lines that kind of come out like here like like this like rays of the sun that's actually an, a layer of the sun that exists around around the photosphere and the chromosphere called the corona c-o-r-o-n-a and let me fix my e here chromosphere okay so those are the different parts of the sun First, we'll talk about the corona, and this is the corona here, this outer layer, what, what appears white in this diagram. This picture was taken by a French photographer named Luc Viator, who has made some really impressive pictures. Uh, he goes up, up to the tops of mountains where you can get very clear shots and has some really nice equipment. And this was taken during a solar eclipse, I believe in 1999. And this is, the moon here is positioned perfectly, perfectly to obscure the sun. And what you see is the corona around what we think of as the disk of the sun, even though the corona here is still considered part of the sun. But that's the white part around the edge here. Now, you can take a picture like this with a camera with proper filters, but don't just try to look at the sun and take a picture like this. It's very, very dangerous to look at the corona. Uh, if you're During a, a solar eclipse, it is dark, and your pupil is dilated. It, get, it gets very large and allows a lot of light in. And because the, the main disk of the sun is blocked out by the moon, it, uh, it doesn't hurt to look at the sun, but it will harm your eyes. You don't feel the pain. You don't squint. You don't... Uh, naturally turn away like you would during a bright typical day but this the radiation emitted by the corona will damage your retina very very quickly and can cause complete blindness permanently uh, very very quickly so don't look at the sun during a during a solar eclipse even though it seems like you can it's very very dangerous a lot of people have their eyes have had their eyesight damaged um, sometimes completely and permanently by looking at the sun during an eclipse. But here taken with proper equipment you can get a real nice picture like this of the corona. And what's interesting is the corona is very very hot up to a hundred thousand degrees Kelvin. And this is one of the unanswered questions about the sun. Scientists aren't sure why it's so hot. It's much hotter than the layer of the surface just below the sun, just, just below the corona. At the bottom edge of the corona is this thin layer called the chromosphere, and that's what you see as the red protruding just a little bit around the edge there. Uh, it's not normally visible because the brightness of the photosphere, which we think of as the main surface of the sun, typically uh, just obscures any any view of the red photosphere. But if the if the of the red chromosphere, excuse me, but if the if the photosphere, if the main disk of the sun is blocked out, you can see this thin layer of red around it, and that's the chromosphere. And it's called the chromosphere because it's colored like that. The word chromo comes from the Greek word for color, and then sphere obviously meaning a round object, so chromosphere means the colored part of the sun. 
and then what's beneath the corona and the chromosphere you you see the corona and part of the chromosphere in this picture what's beneath that what you can't see in this picture is the photosphere and the photosphere is what we think of as the surface of the sun even though the sun doesn't really have a surface if you were to actually start in the middle and travel outward you would find that the sun is made of gas or plasma actually and its density gradually decreases and it doesn't actually have this sudden boundary here where where it goes from being relatively solid to to not being solid it's it's pretty much very uh, dispersed gas rather thin gas all the way through that gradually thins out but at this point at this boundary that we call the photosphere that's the point where the light tends to shine from above the photosphere it, right above the photosphere it's not hot enough to be emitting visible light so what what we think of as the visible surface of the sun is the photosphere the light seems to be coming from from that part of the sun beneath the photosphere the sun is opaque light does not shine through the sun but it is emitted from this this part called the photosphere and that's why we think of that as the surface because if you were to look at the sun and again I'm encouraging you to not do that but if you were to look at the sun it would appear to have a surface and that surface is what we call the photosphere it's um it's denser than the corona but it's still not very dense the the photosphere is about one percent the density of earth's atmosphere the earth's atmosphere at sea level so it's it's very very sparse in that sense and it's not as hot as the corona the photosphere the surface is about 6,000 degrees Kelvin which is really hot of course hot enough to kill you but not as hot as the the hundred thousand degrees Kelvin of the corona and one interesting thing about the photosphere what we think of again is the surface of the Sun is this is where helium was discovered helium was um, noted by astronomers by observing the optical spectrum if you remember back when we talked about atoms and we we talked about different atoms absorb uh, energy and release energy at different frequencies and by observing the radiation emitted or absorbed by these atoms we can identify individual elements based on the particular frequencies that are absorbed or emitted and helium was actually discovered on the Sun before it was discovered on the earth and it was in this part of the Sun the photosphere where helium was found by observing the optical spectrum.